for a pro rider, this sense are either a place where you can try to make up ground that you've lost on the previous climb, or they're a place where you can apply some pressure to your rivals with little extra effort. For the rest of us though, we can still use these pro tips to help improve our descending, going faster, safer, and with more confidence. Now this might seem kind of obvious, but keeping your head up and scanning the road ahead is vital, not just to see where you're going, but also your bike handling as well. Keeping your head up relaxes you by stopping you focusing on all the tiny little details. And there's also a really strong link between looking where you want to go and actually going there. So if you fixate on the things you want to avoid, well, it's actually really quite difficult to avoid them. Yeah, and that could be parked cars or a guardrail on the side of the road or on some particularly sketchy descents that we've raced and ridden down, could be a cliff edge. When cornering, looking where you're going remains incredibly important to your technique. Look for your exit as you're turning in in order to help you through the bend. Your body is naturally going to follow. Place your outside crank into the downward position put the weight of your body through that foot and also onto the inside hand on the bars. This will give you as much grip as possible through your tyres and be prepared to move the bike underneath you. It's actually the leaning of the bike which helps it to turn. So on tight corners you might find that you actually need to lean the bike significantly more than your body in order to stay upright. Your line choice on descent is really important. On normal sized roads, you want to make the corners as wide as possible. That means entering wide, clipping the apex, and exiting wide as well. You have to pay attention to other road users though. You can only use the full width of the road if you can see a long way ahead and you're on a single track road like this one. If there are lines down the middle, just don't cross them. It isn't worth the risk. One of the key components to descending fast is the ability to brake effectively. And that ability will also help you stay safer when you're descending as well. Now don't be afraid of the front brake. It is by far and away the most effective and safest way of slowing you down quickly. And to counter that feeling that you're about to sail over the front of the handlebar, shift your body weight backwards, move your hips away from the saddle and straighten your arms. You should though still apply both brakes at the same time. One exception to this is while cornering. Neither brake is your friend when cornering hard. So try and do all the major slowing down you need to do before you start to turn. If you do need to brake in a corner, then do it gently. And in emergency situations when you really need to jam on, then consider straightening up out of the turn in order to stop your wheels sliding out. It's a great help too if your brakes are also working effectively. That means having your pad set up correctly, there's enough rubber left on them to get you through your ride. Cables are smooth, low friction, so that you can pull your brake levers on nice and easily. This will allow you to just feel what your tyres are doing underneath you, and that will allow you to modulate your braking accordingly. Now, if those positions make you a little bit nervous, it is easy to avoid them and stay in your comfort zone. And that's important because one of the keys to descending is actually being very relaxed. Bikes are often happiest when they're getting lim limited input from us as riders. And if you're nervous, then you're less likely to be able to give the bike the freedom it needs to do its job for you. Now, that could be being tense through corners, or particularly over braking, or maybe just being scared of speed. And while there's no quick fix for being relaxed on the bike, it is something to work on over time. So perhaps you should try getting comfortable on a local familiar descent and then increasing your speed gradually over repeated runs. All of these tips will no doubt help to make you into a really competent descender, but what you can't guarantee are the skill levels of other cyclists around you. No, so if you're riding in a group or you're descending a busy road in a sportif, it's a really good idea to give other riders around you plenty of room to either make mistakes or just to do unexpected things. Yeah, basically expect the unexpected, whether that's from other cyclists or other road users. Yeah, so there you go then, tips on how to descend like a pro. If you want to work more specifically on your cornering though, well, why not click up there and you can watch a video showing you exactly that. 
Yeah, and of course, what goes down must come up, or, or something like that. So if you want to improve your climbing, click down there. And subscribe to GCN, because that's kind of pro too, isn't it? Click on us? Yeah, yeah, if you click on us, then you will subscribe. It's good there, isn't it? Or you can click on Santa Barbara. Yeah, it's nice down there.